Hello everybody, Father Vince here. Um, hope I find you well this uh, lovely evening uh, on yeah, Thursday the uh, 18th of June. Um, brilliant, lovely, lovely day. I had a great day today. Um, if you see me on a Thursday, um, which I tend to be on Fort for the night on a Thursday, if you see me on a Thursday and I'm in a good mood, it's because I had my way in and it went well. And uh, as you know, I've been on a diet. Four weeks now I've been on my diet. And guess what? Today I got on the scales and I've lost one stone. One stone in four weeks. Uh, and you know what? As Father Taman was saying last night about you know, his clothes getting small. And Father Tone, of course, is very slim, isn't he? You know, he's very slim. But for me, I did feel when I said Mass earlier that my cassock was a little bit looser around the chest. And, um, yeah, I was, I was really delighted. So I've had a lovely day today. Uh, that really put me in a good frame of mind uh, when I went to school. And you know what? And I had a couple of people say, looks like you've lost a bit of weight, uh, Father Vince. And, uh, and I said, yeah, I have. I've lost a stone. Can you believe that? I've uh, lost a stone. So, well, yeah, so, um, yeah, really pleased about that. Um, just uh, bigging myself up there. <laughs> um, yeah, so then I uh, went to school, as I normally do, and um, I was helping some children today, kind of individually, in little groups, and... Uh, was in reception actually as well which is always good fun of course reception uh reception yeah they they i don't know reception is such good fun and they, they there's this character they really like um who i kind of go take into the classroom with um and i don't know if i told you about him before but his name is uh, jimmy jam jars and uh sadly um i don't think i've got him today but I, Hang on, hold on a minute. What's that? Oh, he must have turned up somewhere. Hello, Jimmy Jam Jars. How are you today? Are you okay? Not bad, Father Vince. Not bad. Good, good. Well, don't be naughty, okay? Okay, don't be naughty. What? What's that you want to say? You want to bite my nose? No, no, Jimmy Jam Jars. Pack it in, you. Pack it in, okay? All right. Say goodbye to all the boys and girls. Bye everyone, see you soon. Bye. Ooh. That's it. Well, you go over there, you behave yourself, okay? So that's Jimmy Jam Jars. Thursdays, Jimmy Jam Jars always comes in uh, to. Uh, hello, Jimmy Jam Jars. Okay, he says hello to you, Carol. Um, oh, no, he wants to say something to you, Carol. Oh, what do you want to say to Carol, Jimmy Jam Jars? What's this? What's that? You want to you wanna bite her on the nose? No, Jimmy Jam, you pack it in, pack it in. You go back over there, okay? No, you can't bite Carol on the nose. That's naughty, naughty. Anyway, great to see you all. Um, hello to David, just joined us. Margaret's here. Uh, Carol, of course, Ronnie's here. Uh, and when uh, Sharon loses weight, she celebrates with chocolate. Well, it's a big temptation, isn't it? I love chocolate. I love Maybe when the crisps is over, I might move on to chocolate bars. Um, yeah, I do biscuits. I suppose it's a bit like chocolate bars. But uh, Oh, Ronnie, Ronnie, yeah. Hello, Jimmy Jam Jars. Oh, Bridget loves Jimmy Jam Jars. Well, he loves you all, though he does get a bit nasty sometimes because he wants to bite people on the nose. So we'll keep him over there for now, okay? Now, um, uh, yeah, so what's the crisp challenge today? The, the other day... Hula hoops were in the, they won hula hoops, okay? You know, real classic hula hoops. And the thing, good thing about hula hoops are, of course, as every child in every playground knows, uh, except for Easy Water St. George's, of course, because it's a healthy eating school. You wouldn't dream of having a crisp in there. But you can put a hula hoop on every finger, can't you, and every thumb. And you can just eat them like that, you know? What a great design, hey? Hula hoops. And then, 
our challenge. We've got a real classic tonight, a real classic. Here we go. What's it? What's it? What's it? It's full of cheesy goodness in a what's it. So what's it going to be tonight, folks? Are the hula hoops going to be triumphant or is it is it the turn of the what's it? Stiff competition tonight for the hula hoops. We shall see. We shall see. So there we go. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. The rules are simple. Just vote for your favourite crisp in the comments below. And uh, sadly, the loser won't be seen again. But that's only fair because it's lost. Won't be seen anywhere around Enfield, the kind of, uh, you know, North London stroke M25 area. You won't see it ever again. But the, um, whatever it is. Anyway, you, you get the idea. Let's stick them over there. Um, what about, oh, yeah, yeah. What did the fish say when he, um, what, oh, hold on a minute. Oh, yeah, what did the fish say when he hit the wall? Damn. <laughs> uh, never mind. It's a good one, isn't it? Um, yeah, so hello, everyone. Yeah, knickknacks, not, we haven't got knickknacks today. Now, I heard it was um, Paul McCartney's birthday today. So if anyone wants to do violin jukebox, perhaps we can choose Beatles songs today or um, Paul McCartney songs. And, of course, Dame Vera Lynn passed away, didn't she? Uh, 103 years old. Wow, what, a, what an innings, eh? And what, um, what a great lady she was, you know, the, for, the Force's sweetheart. Um, what was that song? Uh, hold on a minute. We you? Yeah, we'll meet again. What a lovely song that is. Um, yeah, any any requests, stick them down there. Um, hey, Jude. Yeah, hey, Jude. Uh, of course. Yellow Submarine. Um. Ready? Sing along. Yellow Submarine, Yellow Submarine. submarine what a lovely song that is uh, uh, Penny Lane oh yeah Chorus. Oh, that was a lovely, yeah. Dun. How's, how's the main bit go? Yeah. 
Uh, love me do. Yeah, I know oh, that's good fun, wasn't it? A bit of Beatles there. Yeah, um, so we've got the Beatles. Uh, yeah, we've done all that stuff. We've done all that jazz. Any birthdays today? I know one birthday. It's my brother-in-law's birthday, Michael. wonder if he's watching today. Hmm, that would be a test, wouldn't it? If he's watching, he'll say, oh, thank you, Father Vince, remembering my birthday. But if he doesn't reply, we know he hasn't been watching. Oh, there we go. Anyway. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, on my diet, I've been, um, now this is probably going to make you, it's, you're probably going to think this is really disgusting, right? I absolutely love this stuff. You ready? Marmite. Anyone like Marmite? You either love it or you hate it, don't you? Marmite. Well, of course... On my diet, I haven't really been eating much bread and butter because I love bread and butter and Marmite. Even like Marmite and cucumber sandwiches, believe it or not. It sounds horrible, but very nice. But I've just been eating little spoons of Marmite straight out the jar. People often think I'm crazy doing that, but I, I love Marmite that much. I'm willing to do that. So it is strong, I'm not going to lie to you. Big dollop of Marmite, but I do enjoy that. Uh, you know, it really picks me up in the morning. A nice spoonful of Marmite sets me up for the rest of the day. Anyone would anyone dream of doing that, or is that absolutely beyond the pale for you guys? Put them on the um, put it on the comments below. Um, there we go. So uh, yeah. Um, so, oh, hate it. Rebecca hates Marmite. Oh, Roddy loves it. Bob Taman loves it. Bridget hates it. Oh, it's interesting. Keith loves it. Uh, Ryan, Marmite on toast with lots of anchor butter and a generous sprinkling of knickknacks on the top, I suppose, Ryan, yeah? <laughs> well, do you know what? I, yeah, Carol, he, she, Carol could not do that on toast with cheese. Well, Maybe I'm just a particularly dedicated Marmite fan and I'm willing to just have a spoonful of it. Who knows? Uh, oh, I've got a bit on my finger there. <laughs> yeah, very nice. I'll put that over there anyway. Um, yeah, so we've had a few things already today, haven't we? Um, oh, yeah, what else have I got? My um, miniature chair of the week. Are you ready for it? Last Thursday, I said one of my passions is collecting these miniature chairs after I saw it on Flog It once, or was it Bargain Hunt, one of those programs. And this one doesn't look very spectacular, I have to be honest with you, but it's a very important design, okay? You ready for it? Dum, dum, dum. This is called the Stool W1. And it was designed in the 1920s by a Dutch uh, architect and furniture designer called Mart Stam. Okay. And you might think, well, that just looks like any bog standard chair you might find in a church hall or something across the, the country. And you're right. It is a pretty unglamorous looking chair. However, this is the first chair ever to have this cantilever design. Can you see that? Can you see that? Before that, chairs generally had four legs, you know, your standard chair. And this one has got this tubular 
uh, I believe the first one was made out of gas pipes put together. Can you see that? So it doesn't look spectacular, but it's an important design from the 1920s, the W1 Stuhl by Mart Stamm. So if you see a chair like that, you know who the guy who, who kind of thought, thought of that design. You see it everywhere now, don't you? Miniature chair of the week. There we go. Um, anyway, any more birthdays, put them down to join my brother-in-law, Michael. Um, and uh, here we go. Yeah. More Marmite comments. Uh, looks like an Ikea design. Well, you know, Ikea has certainly, they certainly stock chairs like that, don't they? But this was like the first, the first one. Hmm. Now, before I sing a song and we do some prayers, I would like to. Um, oh, by the way, I had to sell my um, had to sell my uh, my Hoover the other day. It was just sitting there collecting dust. So I thought that was a bad one, wasn't it? That was a bad one. <laughs> Sorry, that's a bad one. Right. Yeah, um, I was just going to talk about a film, one of my favourite films, and it's got a kind of, a, I believe it's got a Christian message in it, okay? Are you ready for it? The Shawshank Redemption. Anyone seen The Shawshank Redemption? It's often voted as like one of the best films ever made, These, you know, in these polls and that. But when it came out in the cinema, no one really watched it. It became a kind of a phenomenon... Uh, when it was released on DVD, okay? And it's got um, Morgan Freeman in it. And um, the other guy, I've forgotten I've got his name now. Oh, my goodness, what's his name? Tim Robbins, that's it, Tim Robbins. And um, they're in jail, okay? They're in jail. And um, this guy here, he's in jail. Uh, for, he, was, he was basically stitched up and he was he, you know he was framed and he was stuck in jail and he was innocent and he had this horrible horrible kind of lengthy sentence like most of his life kind of thing uh so he's stuck in this jail and he's with morgan freeman this character called red and uh, he kind of bonds with this guy and that's and this he's he's called uh dufresne that's it what's his name andy dufresne the main character tim robbins and he has this kind of calm persona and this kind of, uh, you know, he doesn't let things get on top of him while he's in jail. And um, eventually he gets this little hammer in his cell. He's allowed this tiny little hammer, which he gets stones from the prison yard and he makes chess pieces out of. And then, well, I won't spoil it for anybody if people who haven't watched it, but... Um, Basically, he uses his time in his cell for a very good. Oh, you've all seen it. You've all seen it. Basically, he, um, you know, he, he he kind of taps his way while no one's looking through the wall, and we don't know about this till right at the end of the film, and we realise that he's, he's he's covered this hole in his cell with this poster of this kind of uh, you know pin-up lady or whatever, and he and he goes through. And at the dead of night, well, after he's done the tunnel and that, he escapes. And uh, he's got all this money he's managed to save up. And at the end, he's out of this prison, which is a hell... He had a, he's, had a, he's been beaten up and all sorts in this prison. And he meets his friend at the end. And you see them by the beach. And I love this film because it, it's such a Christian... It's got such a Christian message in um, because it's um, it's about it's about our journey our journey isn't it through life which can be pretty horrific and pretty terrible for some people but there's the good ending you know at the end there's the heavenly bit where he's outside of this jail by the beach and he's wearing these white clothes and the sun's everywhere and it's it's so moving the film because it, it gives everyone hope doesn't it it's one of those films where it gives you some hope you know you think ah oh, if that film uh, the film resonates with us because it gives us hope because we believe that uh one day everything will be 
uh, restored and everything will be right and everything will be just and everything will be wonderful and we call that heaven don't we heaven and then that film reminds us that there's always hope for the future we should never lose hope no matter how dark things might be how terrible things might be there's always hope and of course as Christians we know that don't we because Jesus Christ uh, suffered so much for us on the cross uh, he died for us he bore all our sins on the cross yet we can although we follow follow him to the cross we know that that's not the end the other side is the fullness of the resurrection life the joy of being free being free and that's what this film reminds me of at a very deep level that we all have hope that we will all come through our trials our difficulties and follow our lord to the place where there is no more tears and no more crying and no more suffering and the shawshank redemption is a wonderful allegory of that spiritual truth so i thought i'd share that with you today and if you haven't watched it i'm sorry i've spoiled it for you <laughs> but um you know go go and watch it again it's such a great film such a great film anyway let's sing a song um i'm gonna play the piano now um i'm not yeah i'm gonna get my piano's a little bit out of tune but you know let's give it a go this song's called um, I Watch the Sunrise. I don't know if you know this. It goes like this. Oh, hold on a minute. Let's turn on. I watch the sunrise Lighting the sky Casting its shadow and on this morning, bright though it be, I feel those shadows near me. Sunset Fade 
fading away Lighting the clouds with sleep Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O thou who art from everlasting to everlasting, I would turn my thoughts to thee as the hours of darkness and of sleep begin. O son of my soul, I rejoice to know that all night I shall be under the unsleeping eye of one who dwells in eternal light. To thy care, O Father, I would now commend my body and my soul. All day thou hast watched over me, and thy companionship has filled my heart with peace. Let me not go through any part of this night unaccompanied by thee. Give me sound and refreshing sleep. Give me safety from all perils. Give me in my sleep freedom from restless dreams. Give me control of my thoughts if I should lie awake. Give me wisdom to remember that the night was made for sleeping and not for the harbouring of anxious or fretful or shameful thoughts. Give me grace if as I lie abed I think at all to think upon thee. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. And I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches. To thy care also, O Father, I would commend my friends, including everybody watching this this evening, beseeching thee to keep them safe in soul and body, and to be present in their hearts tonight as a spirit of power and of joy and of restfulness. I pray also for the wider circle of all my associates, all our friends, all our fellow workers, and all strangers this evening, and the great world of men and women, without to me foreign and unknown, but dear to thee, through Jesus Christ our common Lord. Amen. Now, let us um, remember our, our birthdays this evening. And we have got um, Michael. And if I've missed anyone out, apologies. Uh, last chance to stick them down. Uh, please put them down now. And um, 
here we go. And look. Oh, sorry, one second, bear with me. The candle went out at a critical moment. This is for my, uh, my brother-in-law, Michael. He's, uh, he supports Everton, but he's not all bad. So here we go. Right. Dun, dun, dun. Right. Put this here. Lovely little meringue I found in the cupboard. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Michael. Happy birthday to you. Make a wish, Michael. Right. Cheerio, everybody. It's been... Oh, who won? Sorry, who won? Oh, <laughs> I almost forgot the most important thing. What sits? Whoa, what sits have won? Hula hoops, you shan't be seen anymore. What sits are the new winner? Have a lovely evening, guys. See you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.